Okay. 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 So you want to present together or? Yeah. We present together. We have like one big presenter. Or yes. Kind of. I see. Confusion. Uh, you can. Uh, Hello. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we were told to um, yeah, kind of introduce uh, introduce ourselves and like tell you guys a bit about the, the German education system. That's how we named the presentation like this. It's not a lot of information, just what we thought would be interesting for you. So that's our agenda for today. We start with our CVs to just present like what we've done, what we've done so far, like in our educational system, and that you get to know us better. Then we do like um, a small comparison between um, what we call Hochschule, um, which is like the University of Applied Sciences and like the university itself, because in Germany we have two systems. Um, then we like uh, compare the diploma which we had like earlier, like 10 years ago, and the bachelor master system, which like all of Europe adopted. Um, we have some general information about German studies, which we thought would be interesting for you. Um, then we tell about each of our bachelor studies, tell you what we did, what our thesis was in the end and everything. And then some information about the master studies we do right now. And in the end, we are open for discussion questions from you guys. If you want to add something, say what's different in Korea. Okay. Uh, please allow me to say a little bit. Uh, well, I'm going to say that 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 어좀 독일의 학제 시스템이 좀 달라요. 그러니까 디플로마, 배틀러, 마스터하고 뭐 이렇게 인트로덕션 하는 것도 알고 나중에 기회가 되면은 어 독일을 갈 수도 있고 또 누가 압니까? 마스터 앤 피, 아, 다 마스터지. 피치 할때 거기 갈 수도 있고 뭐 포스타 갈 수도 있고 그래서 어, you know, take them as your friend and, and colleague. 아, uh, I I really think this is a good chance, not only for you, but also for them mm -hmm. to get to know each other and uh, exchange information and, and uh, stay as a friend. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. If you have any questions like during the presentation, just ask us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ask yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's start with the CVs. Like first for myself, my name is Konrad Koshnik and I'm from uh, just <laughs> and I'm from uh, from Weiterstadt, which is like really close to Darmstadt where we study. You see it with this arrow. And I was born in 1994 in Kostgera, which is also like really close to that. By the way, in Germany, I'm not sure if you know, but we have like 16 individual states in Germany, and then it's like, oh, uh, how do we get out of this? The green one, right? Yes. Okay, we have uh, 16 individual states in Germany and that's a, like a federation and the state where I'm from is Hessen. So come here, let me Yeah, you go ahead, you okay. go ahead. It's, um, yeah, and, and Hessen is basically here and that's where, where I come from. Um, I was ra raised in Weiterstadt, which is like really close and my parents still live there. And I did elementary school from 2000 to 2004. So in Germany, we have four years of elementary school. And after that, we have what we translated to, uh, to high school. And that's from 2004 to 2013 in my case. And it was already in Darmstadt where I study now. So we have basic, basically four years of elementary school and then nine years or eight years, depends on, on the state um, of higher school, basically. And so four years in elementary school. Yeah and longer in, in uh, high school. middle school yeah. or high school. Yeah, we call so it high school. I'm not sure if there's a middle school. You just go for Yeah, it's like together, like middle and high school okay. because uh, yeah, then and it's eight, eight nine years. high school. Yeah, if you want to go to the university, you have to do this high school for nine years. Uh -huh. If you just want to um, like work some, somewhere not as like an academic, you can like just do middle school, which is seven or eight years, I think. Seven. Yeah, seven years. So there's like a shorter version of that if you don't want to study after that. But we decided on studying, so we had to do this nine years. Yeah, yeah in total 13 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after that, like in 2013, I did my like final exams in high school and then I started to studying. 
And I studied in, I started studying in Mannheim, which is here. It's not very far from home, like from there to there, it's like half an hour drive. So Germany is also not that big. Um, yeah, and I started studying mechanical engineering in my bachelor's degree. Uh, we, we explain that later to you what that means. And uh, 2016, I was done. I graduated and I started um, doing my master's studies, like till today, because this is part of my master's studies here. And I started studying at Darmstadt University of Applied Science. And the, uh, or the, like the study I'm doing is called Automotive Engineering. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now I will introduce myself a little bit. My name is Daniel Hutchison. Um, I'm from yeah, first of all, I was born in 1992 in Sinsheim, and my state is called Baden-Württemberg, and yeah, it's also close to Mannheim, like a very little bit south of it. Next to Bavaria. <laughs> yeah, next to Bavaria. Um, so you knew each other before uh, joining a university? Uh, no, Not we, before the we met yeah. during our master's studies. And... Um, yeah, I was raised in Sinsheim and Heidelberg. That's like the upper arrow. Um, I was going to elementary school from 1998 to 2002, also four years, and then switched to high school, um, like the long version, which you have to do uh, to study afterwards, and it's called gymnasium in Germany. And yeah, I was there from 2002 to 2011. And then I started my bachelor's studies, uh, like Conrad Mechanical Engineering, but I was at the University of Applied Science in Karlsruhe, here. And maybe someone heard about Karlsruhe, it's like famous for its technical edu education in Germany. And yeah, and afterwards, yeah, we met during our master's studies at the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt. And yeah. I started there also 2016 and we're almost finished now. Yeah, okay. Then let's start with the comparison between like the systems we have for studying. We have like two major systems. One is called, in, in German it's called Hochschule, which is directly translates to high school, but that's not what it is. Um, it, <laughs> they translated it to English to University of Applied Sciences. And then there's like the standard university. And Daniel and I go to uh, University of Applied Science. We did our bachelor there and our master we do now there. And basically, it's, it's, these are like two systems. They go along each other. And you can both like, graduate in each of these systems. But you have to decide before which one of these you do. And there's some like main differences. For example, um, on the University of Applied Sciences, they usually have like really small courses like we have here. And um, and on the big universities for mechanical engineering, they have, have up to 800 students in one lecture hall. So there's no interaction between the professor and the students or anything. And then, um, like, the, the main uh, reason because the White called University of Applied Sciences is because it's, like, really oriented to have practical and application-oriented content. So they want to get you, like, fit for the job, fit for working as an engineer. Whilst the universities um, more focus more on science and research, they have like bigger laboratories and everything. And um, yeah, what's, what's also different is that on the universities of applied sciences, you have at least one semester where you do like an internship to work as an engineer and to get to know like what you have to know for as an engineer, what you have to do. And there isn't such thing at the university. And at the end of um, bachelor or master's studies, there's usually a thesis which you have to write. And the thesis commonly is written in, in a company at uh, the University of Applied Sciences, which means like you go to a company, you get a project, and you work on that for half a year, and then you write a scientific paper about that. And uh, at the university, you normally like do a research topic on which you write your um, thesis on. Um, the difference, well, the, like the drawback of the Hochschule or University of Applied Sciences is you can't um, do your doctoral studies there, so there's no option to do a PhD. There are some which like um, try to, to allow students to do a PhD now, but that's a kind of long process. So if you want to do a PhD and want to become a professor or something, you have to go to a university and not to a University of Applied Sciences. And what's also different is that um, in the University of Applied Science, uh, it's pretty common that students leave the university after their bachelor's degree, which is like three years of studying, and they start working in a company, and they never do their master's degree. 
while it's on the university, on the normal university, they say it's just like an intermediate step. You have to do your master pretty much to be able to work. So that's the basic difference. It's pretty confusing that we both decided on this one on the left side. Right, so. Yeah. <coughs> so you already have a job in, in a company? Um, I had, but I I went then for yeah, for full time study again for the masters. But I won't. And they support you. Um, they don't support me anymore. They used to uh, they used to support me during my bachelor's, okay. but now um, they I just have a contract. So if I'm done with my master's studies, okay. I can just join them again. So they just allow you to to finish your master uh, yeah, without right. any support. Right. Yeah. But you have a contract after two years of a master, you go back to a company. Exactly. Yeah. That's how it is. So you you just self paid. You, you I'm self paid right now. Yeah. Okay, then um, let me just uh, talk you through the three basic um, like graduations, however you want to call it, uh, we have. So in the past, um, the German engineers were pretty famous for their um, Diplom Engineer degree, or Dipl Inch, which is like the short form of it. Um, yeah, it was pretty well known like in, in uh, lots of parts of the world, but for some reason, like all of Europe decided to adopt a new system <coughs> ah, sorry, uh, some information about the diploma. So it used to be like this. We had three years of basic studies on, for example, mechanical engineering. And after these three years, there was a pre-diploma, which was already like a test, like a small, smaller form of the graduation. And then there was like one year of specialized studies after that. So around about four years. I mean, it really depends. In Germany, you're pretty flexible. You can do longer, you can do shorter, like however you want. But that was like the basic thing. Yeah, and then there was this Bologna process, and all of the European states um, committed on doing that new system, which consists of uh, like a bachelor and a master. And since 2010, every country in Europe, except uh, I think Switzerland and Austria, they didn't adopt it, but all the other countries did have this system. And it works like this. You have three years of bachelor studies, which is like the basic studies after your, your school. And then you have two years of master studies if you want, it's optional. And they're usually more specialized. So the bachelor studies usually is for, for engineers, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, something like this, construction engineering. And then the master can be like more specialized, for example, in my case, automotive engineering. But you can also do like mechanical engineering as well. Um, the reason they did it is that exchange in Europe is made way easier. You can just go to whatever country you want as like, it's called Erasmus program, where they pay you like a small salary every month and you can go to any other uh, country just to have like a nice exchange of, of people in Europe to learn the other cultures and everything. So it's made pretty easy because all have the same system. We have the same credit points uh, system because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it should be easier because um, they had to align the curriculums. So basically all the... Um, all the mechanical engineering studies in Germany should be kind of the same or in all of Europe, but it actually is kind of hard. So they want to, to, make, uh, to, to create the possibility that you do your bachelor wherever you want and then you move somewhere else for your master, even like to, for example, you do your bachelor in Germany and do your master in France or something like this. But it's not that easy because a lot of universities, uh, they want to have like uh, a test of you, they want to check how good you are. But basically the goal was that the goal of this process was to make it easier for you to have like more freedom to go wherever you want to study. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, for master's studies, there's also um, like the comparison between consecutive and non-consecutive masters. So for example, in mechanical engineering, all the masters are, uh, or basically most of them are consecutive, which means you have to do um, a mechanical engineering bachelor before that. Or like in my case, automotive engineering, you have to do mechanical or electrical or mechatronical engineering, something like this beforehand to be able to, to do that master. But they're also non-consecutive masters. Like the most famous one is the MBA, Master of Business Administration. So I can do like any bachelor degree I want. And after that, I can do an MBA to top off with some like uh, business knowledge. That's how it works. Okay, and then, um, some general information about German studies, what we thought you'd find interesting. Um, for all state universities, which is like 
95% of universities in Germany, so there's no tuition fees. <coughs> so you can just go there. You have to pay like a really small amount per semester, like 200 euros, which translates to like 100, uh, 250,000 won. Um, so it's not that much, but it's basically for like having a ticket. You can like go around with, uh, with a subway and bus for free with a ticket and everything. So there's basically no fee you pay for, for study. You can study how long you want and it's totally free. Mm. So the state pays for it. Up to a master degree or up to a PhD? Um, up to a PhD. You get paid during your PhD yeah, usually. Right, yeah. So you get paid by, by the university. So there's also no fees. And there's that on most universities or like on, yeah, on most universities, there's no limitation. So if you never graduate, you still don't have to pay for, for the time you're there. Mm -hmm. So you can do like 10 years of studying in your bachelor's degree, you never graduate, but you never pay for any of the expenses of your study. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. But you have to pay your own uh, living expenses. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to, just yeah. studying. It's just the studying, there's no yeah. tuition fee for that. Um, How about the uh, a dormitory? Let's say you're staying in a dorm, uh, you need to pay? Or? Yeah, like living expenses, they're excluded. No. Oh, okay. They are. Like, yeah, it's only the two. Mm. They are like dormitories, but usually, I come to that point later, but usually, like German students, they move out from home for studying, for the time they're studying, and they're uh, living in shared <laughs> flats. So, we just, for example, I live together with another fellow student, like in one flat, and we share that. So it's not that expensive. Yeah, that's how we do it usually. But there are also like dormitories across the university. Uh, okay, uh, like the second point, um, studies can be extended or shortened as the student likes. So if you, you know, like, for example, you can't uh, finish your bachelor's in six semesters or so three years, you can just extend it. For example, Daniel and I, we like usually the master's degree is uh, four semesters. But because we do this semester and we don't uh, do enough credit points here, we just added one semester, so we're doing five. Mm -hmm. But that's no problem. It's just, yeah, you can decide it on your own. Mm -hmm. And if you get through your exams quicker, if you want to do more, then you can just graduate faster. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty flexible. Um, in Germany, we only have final exams at the end of, sem of the semester, mm -hmm. so no midterms or anything. And there's like usually the final semesters are also like uh, the final exams are also like the only part of your grade. So there's no um, homework you have to hand in assignments or anything. It's just that one exam. If you and fail that, months. yeah. If you fail the, the last exam, you're uh, yeah you you have to like repeat it next semester or anything. But mm -hmm. there's only this one exam. Yeah, and as I said, there's no homework and there's no attendance check in Germany. So you can just attend the lecture if you want to, but if you don't want to, you can stay at home. But I mean, at the end, there are the final exams, so you have to learn by, itself, by yourself. If you, you know. And yeah, students are responsible for their learning progress. So if they don't join um, the lecture and if they don't do their homework, it's going to be hard for them to, to pass the test. And I know this sounds pretty easy now, but we just checked and a third of all the mechanical engineering students who start their studies like drop out of their studies. So the final exams are really hard to, to make up for like the, the semesters being more like relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I already mentioned. Like students usually move out from home and they live in shared flats in Germany. Not all of them, but most of them. And in between two semesters, we have like a break. Um, and the break is usually two months, can be longer, can be shorter. And in that break, most of the time you don't have anything to do, so you have like free time. And sometimes you have to do like assignments, but yeah, that's how it is in Germany. So you have like four semesters of studying, then uh, your exams, and then two semesters of break, and then the next semester starts. And the general job perspectives uh, in Germany are pretty good for engineers. And we just checked and there are like 70,000 open engineering jobs in Germany right now, which you can like apply for and everything. So that's pretty good in our case. <laughs> yeah. Because we have like a lot of industry. The and job is and pretty much open to uh, foreign, foreigners as well? Uh, um, not like. to, uh, I'm not so sure. Like to European foreigners, it's no problem at all. Yeah, so if yeah. you're like from France or anything, there's no problem at all. But I think if you, you have to apply for a visa if you want to work there. Yeah, you have yeah. like government paper stuff to get. Yeah. But, um, but I think it's basically doable. So Yeah, and the companies, they're yeah. open to foreigners. Okay. Oh. 
But I, I understand that if, say, a student, a young student apply a job in a German company, and as long as that company accepts them, yeah. then uh, yeah. it would be very easier yeah. for, for, for yeah. students and uh, applicants to yeah. get a visa. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's a lot of like a lot of work to do that. Like some papers you have to fill out and everything, but mm -hmm. if you have a job there, they just want to know why you're there for for that long. So, Okay. Okay. <clears throat> then <clears throat> we start to talk a bit about our bachelor studies. So in my case, I did my bachelor studies in uh, Mannheim, and the university was called Duale Hochschule Baden-Württemberg, and that translates to Cooperative State University. It's kind of a special university I went to, and. It has uh, 6,400 students in Mannheim and in total 33,000 in all over Baden-Württemberg, the state Daniel comes from. It uh, was founded in 1974 and they offer business, creative and technical engineering courses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bachelor study is like uh, six semesters and it's fixed for that university. It's kind of an ex exception from the usual principles so I did three years. And what makes this university special is this so-called dual studies or cooperative studies. And that means that the student is also employed at a company and the company pays you a salary during your studies. And <clears throat> we have um, six semesters, as I, uh, as I said, and each semester is divided up into two parts. And one part is like a theoretical part where you study at the university, have lex lectures and then exams at the end. And then we have three months of working and performing like small projects in the company to get to know how an engineer works and in the company, everything. So it's always changing three months in university, three months in the company and you change between that. And they pay you the whole time, the company. And um, it works that way that the company has to apply at the university to be able to train students, like to, to be able to employ students and send them to the university to educate them. And as a student, you just uh, apply at the company and the company does all the stuff with the university for you. So basically you just like uh, apply to company, you get a contract, they sign you in at the university, and then from that on, yeah, you're basically in. And um, the process is this way, that you usually get taken over by the company. So they like pay for your education, they try to get to do a good education for you, and after the three years of study, they want to have you as an employee for them. That's how it works basically. And that's how it worked for me. They wanted to have me. So I, yeah, I got a job uh, from them, but I said, I want to do my master's studies. And I said, okay, no problem. Then do your master's studies and come back afterwards. Mm -hmm. So as long as the employee like to study, uh, the company uh, usually allow them to Mm, not, uh, I think I was kind of lucky. Like most of the companies, because they pay you a lot of money beforehand, they want you to work after that. So in my case, I, I said to them, I want to do my master's study. Is there any way? They said, I mean, uh, my grades were pretty good. And then they said, okay, do your master's studies and come back afterwards. It's okay. For me. But it's not all the time this way. Like some of my fellow students from there, they didn't get a job or they uh -huh. wanted to continue their studies and they, they dropped out of their company. But it, like, it doesn't really matter because you have a general bachelor's degree, so you can go wherever you want to do your master's <coughs> and apply for another job. It's just like an opportunity after this, after this study. Okay. And the company I did this with was Daimler or Mercedes-Benz, the brand you know, probably. Um, uh, I did it with Mercedes-Benz trucks and buses. I'm not sure if you, you knew, I'm sure you all knew, uh, know the Mercedes-Benz cars, but they also do like trucks and buses. And I work for them in Mannheim as well in their plant. And it's a production plant for medium and heavy duty diesel engines. Mm -hmm. So they do like casting, they have a foundry there, casting, machining, uh, miling, everything, and the assembly of the engines. And um, they also do uh, city buses and coaches, which they assemble there and use the engines of the plant. 
So I have some uh, pictures of the plan. So it's the oldest plant of Mercedes-Benz. I'm not sure if you know, but um, like they say, Carl Benz, the founder of Mercedes-Benz, um, invented the car. And it was like pretty close to Mannheim where he invented it. And Mannheim was his very first uh, plant he had. So it's still on the same place. It was uh, like 125 years ago. And <clears throat> this is a picture from the foundry. They have <laughs> a lot of iron there for all the big engines. I mean, the engines are really that big for, for trucks. So a lot of iron to be cast. You can see it here, like an engine next to the old man is pretty huge. And a picture of an engine. And here are some pictures of the products of Daimler trucks and buses. So this is like a Mercedes-Benz truck we have in Europe like a lot. Um, this is a bus from, from Mercedes-Benz we have in Europe as well. And um, Daimler Trucks also owns some uh, brands all over the world, like for example, Western Star from America or Freightliner, which is also like, uh, an American um, truck manufacturer that is owned by Daimler. Mm -hmm. Also, Baga Trends, which is from India, and Mitsubishi Fuso, which is from Japan. And they all belong to the Daimler concern. And they all use the engines from Daimler. As I said, I had um, six practical semesters in total. The last one was my bachelor thesis, but like I have, I had five uh, practical semesters I had to absorb. And you do like usually you do every practical semester in another department, so you get to know a lot of, uh, of the company and yeah, learn a lot. So the first I did in machining of crankshafts for the big engines. Mm -hmm. and the second one I did uh, in the lean management, so it was more like a management perspective in crankcase and cylinder liner production. Um, then I was at the hot test benches for the heavy duty engines after the assembly. Um, then I was in technical planning, controls, and measuring technology for, for the engines. And the last like, normal um, practical period I did in the US, in Portland, Oregon. Um, and I was in product validation for heavy duty powertrains, which means, like, in Portland, is, um, it's up on the west coast but in the north of, of the US. And they have like the headquarter there, Daimler Trucks North America. And we also produce some trucks there, but mainly it's like testing and everything. So we had these big American trucks and we instrumented them with like um, strain gauges and everything. And then we like drove thousands of miles and tested the trucks and everything. Mm -hmm. And I did that for three months. It was pretty cool. They paid me for everything then, like for the flight, for the flat, everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then <clears throat> some short information, as I told you, after the bachelor studies, you have the thesis you have to write to, to graduate. It's like between three and six months, depends on the university. And my topic was development of a cold test concept for replacement engines, um, which basically means that the plant in Mannheim also uh, refurbishes engines. So if you have a um, Mercedes-Benz car or truck and your engine fails or something, you can just send it to Mannheim and the plant will like disassemble the whole engine, clean everything, the parts that are damaged or like worn, they, they swap them out and everything, and then they assemble them again. And this is what they call replacement engines. And every engine, uh, if it's new, like from the production line or if it's re refurbished like this, you have to quality check it before you sell it to the customer, of course. And usually a quality check is like a test bench where you run the engine on the, on the test stand and like dry everything out. But um, like a normal conventional, we call it hot test, um, it's very time intensive because you have to fill up the engine with oil, with um, like the fuel and everything. Then you have to fire it up and it takes some time to get warm before you can do the measurements and everything. So it's like time intensive and, and expensive. And what they do is like a so-called cold test, um, which means you never fire the engine up. You just spin the engine with an electrical motor. And then you measure like the pressures in the cylinders and everything, like all the sensor data. And um, yeah, that's what they wanted to implement there. And what I had to do was um, I had to do like a map of every sensor and actuator that is on an engine and find a way to like to test it. For example, sensors, um, all you can, like in a cold test, all you can measure is like the ambient temperature, but you can check that if the, if the sensor gives the right value. And actuators, for example, the, the turbocharger, which has like uh, valves and everything, you can like check them if they work. Oh, that's what I had to do. And I did it for two Mercedes-Benz diesel engines, um, exemplary. You can see the engines here. It's like a uh, two and a half, uh, two point two liter four-cylinder diesel and a V six diesel. 
it is for them. That's an example of that engine. Like the turbocharger had two stages, so you have to like um, test both stages and have to spin the turbochargers. That's uh, it's a bit blurry, but this is how the old test stand looks. And they wanted to replace that. And what I had to do is like, basically um, to like concept of the run. So this should be the engine RPM. So you can see like how the engine RPM goes during the test cycle. And then I wrote down what they have to test in each test cycle. And this is like the dark blue one is the rail pressure in the fuel system. And yeah, that's what I kind of figured out during that. Three, so two, that is two, called two. cold test? It's called cold test, yeah. Okay. Okay, <coughs> then let's switch over to demo. <coughs> yeah. Um, I went to the University of Applied Science in Karlsruhe, and unlike Conrad, it's like a normal University of Applied Science, so I wasn't employed by any company. I was a full-time student, and I had like one big practical block in the fifth semester. And yeah, that's basically the difference. And yeah, like I said, Karlsruhe is like a known city for its technical education especially the Karlsruhe Institute of Technik, the KIT, is known all over the world. And, yeah, and currently there are 8,200 students and 488 employees and 209 professor, uh, professors at the University of Applied Science in Karlsruhe, yeah. And it was founded in 1878, so it's kind of old. Um, and it's also a state university, which means there are no tuition fees, which was kind of nice. But not because a state university. Uh, yeah. Not, you yeah. just mentioned that most of the university they don't require any tuition. Yeah. yeah. Not because of a, a state university. Uh, yes, but all the state universities, there's no tuition, but there are not yeah. that many private universities in Germany. It's it's like also private universities, you have to pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, but it's like maybe 5% of all the universities. I don't yeah. know one for engineering. I actually don't know one. It's usually for business. There are some uh, private uh, um, um, yeah, universities, but for engineering, there are basically only uh, state universities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's also a University of Applied Science. Uh, like Conrad mentioned, the differences between uh, this form of education and the normal university, we have, it's more practical oriented. And yeah, and they're all, yeah, practical oriented. And in my case, there are some minor differences depending on the uh, university or University of Applied Science you go to. They have like smaller changes in timetable and stuff so unlike conrad uh, at my university it was uh, usually you have to take seven semesters for your bachelor degrees because of the fifth semester which was like a big practical one you have to go to a company too and yeah like i said it includes a practical semester which uh, yeah, the duration was six months and it's also common to go to a company for this yeah, practical semester. And yeah, the seventh semester was um, my bachelor thesis, which also takes about six months uh, to finish. And it's also spent in company in like almost all the cases. So when do you apply for, for a job? Say you are in, in bachelor degree. Yeah, that's. And after three years and you apply uh, a job, yeah, that, that's what you do. It's possible. No, we're like doing our master degree now. I mean, uh, you said yeah. that you're doing the bachelor's. You yeah. already have employed, but only for like it's yeah. basically like an internship. Uh, just an internship. Yeah, for kind half of. a year or uh, yeah, six months before you graduate, you got an internship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then, that's like the nice thing of the University of Applied Science in comparison to the normal university. You're always in touch with companies as a student before, you graduate. before we get you. Yeah, we do like um, internships uh, in the fifth semester, the practical semester, uh -huh. and we can spend our time uh, in the company to uh, do like a big project and for our bachelor thesis. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so we're always in touch with companies and that's kind of nice mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases if you like write your bachelor or master thesis in a company 
they usually ask you if you want to work for them. If you do a good job during that yeah. six month period, they ask mm -hmm. you if you want to work for them full time. Or something. Okay. That's so after internship, say a uh, company like to hire you, yeah. and then and they start to pay you. Yeah. And during your your master degree. They all they also pay you during the degree. So the it, that's it's kind of a paid internship you do okay. because you do a project for them. You get during your the thesis. Degree. Yeah, you get okay. get your thesis. Like you write your thesis for a project. They like. The problem they have basically sure. is for example that code test they wanted to have this code test so they like basically paid me for yeah uh, it's like a, a time limited employment for right. six uh -huh. months and then you have to yeah if they like you and you're doing a good, good job yeah so, how many courses do you have to take for master degree um there are so usually year. 30 credit points 30, per 30 credit. semester but 30 but german credits yeah, German credits are times two, maybe like Korean credits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for this class, we get three, three credit points right. in yes. Korea, and in Germany, it would be six credit points. Okay, so, so that's twice as well. Okay. So we have like 15 Korean credits every month, basically. Uh, every so semester, sorry. Every semester, yeah. Yeah. which is about five times of these credits. Yeah. Okay. That's right. But as we said, there's no homework. <laughs> so like the <laughs> no semesters, homework. the semesters are pretty relaxed. We have to say like, that's, that's where the good student life uh, comes in. So you have mm -hmm. like a nice semester. And then at the end of the semester, there's like the final exam. Yeah, and everybody is like, shit, we didn't do the homework. <laughs> we have to study a lot to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. Yeah, but the exams are really hard. So especially at the beginning of uh, the bachelor degrees, they sort a lot of students out by just let them fail. How about the professor? I like to go there. I'm enjoying being. Yeah. I mean, I think the professor job is, uh, is pretty cool in Germany yeah. because like, um, you don't have to um, yeah, correct any assignments or anything mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you just do your, um, do your lecture and the students, they want, uh, like the students that are there, they are there because they want to attend and listen, mm -hmm. not because they have to. So most of the students are pretty interested in what you do. I know some uh, German colleague uh, as a friend and as a colleague, uh, they not like in uh, Korea. Uh, in Korea, a professor just below the university. But in German, they kind of a, a dual job. Some and they spend time in university, but the, at the same time, you spend some time in a company. Yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, in Germany, you're course. pretty free as yeah. a professor to do yeah. yeah. But we here, uh, once we quit uh, here, uh, ne we never be able to get back. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That's different. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and in my case, in Karlsruhe, um, the first three semesters of my bachelor studies uh, was kind of marked as the basic study period, and afterwards, uh, yeah, and in these three semesters, you're learning like the fundamental topics, um, math, and like physics stuff, which you have to know, and. Afterwards, um, from semester four to seven, uh, you can specify in a direction, but they're kind of given from the university to you, the choices. And in my case, I could choose between um, specializing in production, uh, general engineering design, vehicle technology, refrigeration, air conditioning, and environmental technology, and aeronautical engineering. And I took the fifth option, uh, aeronautical engineering, which kind of explains why I'm interested in this course, um, because composite materials are playing a big role. And yep. And for my practical semester, uh, so the fifth semester, I went to a small company which is called Group Aircraft, and it's a very small aircraft manufacturer in Tusenhausen in Bavaria. You may know Bavaria from the Oktoberfest, you know, know. and so it's kind of as if you uh, in intern, right? Yeah, yeah, that was my six months internship, <clears throat> and the company was founded in 1971, and has around about 250 employees at the moment, and it's like the last aircraft manufacturer in Germany, which. Um, designs, manufactures, and develops, and distributes their aircrafts. So it's not, it's like a pure German company. 
and that's the last one. And they develop yeah, high performance aircrafts, uh, which are also capable of um, aerobatic stuff and take a lot of G loads. And yeah, the G120 TP, it's called, it's like a very small, I have pictures afterwards. It's a very small military trainer, like um, two pilots, and so one pilot and one instructor. And they train um, like combat pilots before they go to the big jet, jets, you know. And they also do the G520 NG, and that's kind of special aircraft because it can fly uh, 20 km kilometers high. And yeah, for research stuff, and you know, something like that. And my task in the company was to implement the seat part management in the final assembly line, like to check the current um, situation and uh, yeah, implement a better way, a more economic way to yeah, handle the seat parts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and here are some pictures. So that's like the G120 TP, the small military trainer, which can take a lot of G loads. It's plus 6G and minus 4G, I believe. Uh, yeah, and that's the G520NG, and it's capable of flying 20 kilometers, kilometers high. No. And there's also a lot of composite. A lot of composites. Yeah. Say, how much is it? Um, I think all of it is kind of... Euro? Oh, it's oh. 2.7 million. 2.7 million. Yeah, the G127 is... And the other one is it's even more expensive, I guess. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <clears throat> and now I'm saying some words uh, for my bachelor thesis, like the seventh semester I took in Karlsruhe. And for this, I went to a company which is called Embatec. Um, it's placed in Stuttgart, and it was the former design department of Daimler AG. So all the construction stuff and like developing uh, tasks were yeah, made by them. And in 2011, a French company called Aka Technology bought 65% from uh, MBTEC, so it doesn't belong anymore to Daimler directly. And so it's more of a free company now. Um, and currently they have like 4,000 employees. And they're selling engineering and marketing services to other uh, original equipment manufacturers out of the Motif branch, like a huge customer is still Daimler, but also they're doing stuff for BMW or Porsche or international comp uh, automotive companies like um, we had a big job from Aston Martin and also Nissan. And my topic of my, the bachelor thesis was I had to implement an electric driven compressor into the air path of an Infiniti Q50. And it was kind of a case study. I don't know if you know um, what's an electrical driven compressor. It's like a turbocharger, but instead of the turbine uh, powering up the compressor, you swap, swap it out to an electrical motor which drives the compressor so you get independent from the um, exhaust gas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What, what is the benefit, benefit uh, using the three motors? Yeah, you're in, uh, the turbocharger depends on the, um, the exhaust gas. So a mm -hmm. uh, small um, RPMs, RPMs um, mm -hmm. there's not enough um, exhaust gas to power the turbocharger, but if you instead power it up with electric motor, it kind of gets the independent. Cost will go up. Yeah, the cost will go up, yeah, but you have uh, the full um, pressure all the time. There's no turbo lag, like yeah. there is in a normal car. Mm -hmm. yeah. They often use like a small one for like the lower RPMs, and if you, uh, if the RPMs are going up, they swap it out to like a mm -hmm. conventional turbocharger, if there is enough exhaust gas <clears throat> yeah and the duration was also six months and here are some pictures um, kind of funny because it's the same motor which Connor talked about the OM 
651 or 2.2 uh, diesel engine from Daimler. And yeah, here's like a computer aided design model. And uh, I kind of made a dummy and had to fit it in out there. And yeah, I placed it right there. And here you can see some errors which I had to consider, which because of the vibrations mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And now, uh, yeah, we're getting to our master university, the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt. And uh, it's founded in 1971. And it's quite big um, compared to our former universities. It has 16,600 students. 967 employees and 321 professors. How much students does Han Yang have in total? Uh, 20,000, I guess. 20,000. Okay. So it's that big. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we already so it's quite no, We big. do have a two campus. Actually. Yeah, one yeah. main campus here, and the other one is the located in Hansan, which is about one hour. Yeah, the Erika campus. Have you been there? No, we, we ex yeah. accidentally signed in for some courses. Oh, yeah. Erika. But yeah. we, we had the chance to drop them, like in the drop period. We found out that they're in Erika. We looked for the room here, we're walking around, and then, like, shit, there's no room. And then uh, we found out it was in Erika. Uh, because the whole quarter is like, if you, uh, if you uh, want to switch it to English, it's like only half English. So sometimes we didn't get what's in that error. And it said Erika, but we didn't know what Erika was, so we just took it. <laughs> but it's also a little difference between here in Germany. In Germany, you just go to class. There's no, like... Yeah, yeah we don't know these registration period. periods or anything. In Germany, you just, like, you can also sign in online sometimes, but it's yeah. not it's, it's not as not big required or, or something. Yeah, yeah. it's complicated. It's like, it was new to us. It doesn't look good. Uh, well, uh, can you press the skip that? Maybe, uh, I'm not sure. There was no button, right? <laughs> yeah, and our master studies is um, normally hold to, as in total four semesters. And we are from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Mechatronics, and Polymer Technologies. Mm -hmm. And our field of study is Conrad as I mentioned already, is studying automotive engineering and I am studying mechanical engineering. So I'm studying more of a general engineer, I guess. And, but the differences between our field of studies is very, very small. We almost have all the same lectures and maybe it's, I don't know, two, three lectures differ. So different per semester. So for yeah. example, I have like some chassis development and here's more thermodynamics or something like this. Yeah, there's like minor differences. Minor differences yeah. And yeah, there are usually three theoretical semesters, like semester one to three in the master's degree. And uh, the fourth is the master's thesis. And yeah, like before, it's usually held in a company. But you said it's only one year for master degree. No, it's two years. It's two years. Fourth semester. Oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, and which uh, kind of special is uh, our university? We have like a have to do a big research project, and we also did it together. We uh, did a concept of a laminar opposed jet, and our topic of research was to design the laminar opposed burner, uh, manufacture it, assemble, and test run it. So. Like some brief information, um, the overall goal was um, to use this post burner to calibrate a Raman Rayleigh spectrometer. Uh, it's kind of a big research topic right now at our university. There are a lot of PhDs um, able to do their research on it. And um, the Raman Rayleigh effect is kind of used to determine the specifications of a gas or flame. Uh, like the temperature or the flow probabilities and species and yeah the good thing is it's measured contactless with a high energy laser and yeah for calibration there is uh, you have to have like a steady well-known flame configuration and uh, yeah the perfect 
situation for an opposed jet burner. <clears throat> yeah, and just some pictures really quick. That's like one half of the opposed jet burner we designed. And that's like uh, the configuration we run. And we developed some flames and they're steady and everything is known so you can calibrate the Raman Rayleigh spectrometer. And yeah, we spent one year time on that. Like during our studies? Yeah, uh, parallel. During our lectures and everything, we researched on that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that was our brief introduction to the German education system. Thank you so much. First of all, any questions or want to add like yeah. something you yeah. find interesting, which yeah. is different in Korea? Just yeah. feel free. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask any us anything. You can also ask us like after the lecture or anything, so no problem. <laughs> So you, uh, first of all, uh, you would have many choices for you to go outside, I mean, out of German. What made you come to Korea? Why Korea? Why Hanyang? Because it's different. And yes, different, but uh, German, I mean, the, uh, Japan will be also different. Why yes. Korea? Why Hanyang? Well, I'm... I'm kind of interested in the culture here in Korea and yeah, why? general Asia because uh, I visited several times the United States and stuff. So Do you spend some time in the United States. Yeah, like He's for, South American. Yeah, yeah. Oh, half American. Yeah. Okay. And I spent some time there, and I, yeah, I know the country, and so I just wanted to see like the Asian version, the, the diff, like I just want to see something different. Okay. So I came here and. Like Korea is a high tech place and very educated and yeah, so I just saw it. Okay. <laughs> to come here. Okay. Again, welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, in my case, it was a bit different. I actually wanted to go to uh, uh, to Scandinavia in Europe, and there was no like opportunity for mo for me to go there because all the universities uh, like they didn't accept me because there were already too many Germans going there. It mm -hmm. always has to be a balance. Then I heard about Daniel going here to, to South Korea. I was like, mm. at first I was like, mm, why should I go to South Korea? Okay. But then I did some I did some research and like for me as like kind of automotive enthusiast and interested in that industry and I want to work there. Like it's in Asia, it's either Korea or, or uh, Japan. And I thought like Korea is going to be a great opportunity. And I heard good things about Hanyang engine mm -hmm. of Korea. So yeah. that's what I thought. Okay, if Daniel has the plan, I just join. <laughs> uh, but you, you, we, you, you, uh, we have uh, many universities in Korea. Uh, yeah. Any special reason why you choose the Hanyang? Yeah, it's a partner university with our university. So I see a partner. So we yeah. don't pay any tuition here as well. We okay. just have, yeah, we, we're still students in Germany, basically. And we do the exchange program for that one semester. We don't, don't pay any tuition. So no. Hanyang pay or uni, your university pay? I'm not sure how that works. Okay, I think okay. it, I think um, it's it's an exchange. So like Korean students can come to our university yeah. and they don't have to pay anything for that. So we yeah. can go come here and go. Pay. That's all. Okay. Feel free to come. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're uh, invited. <laughs> As long as they are free. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very interesting. Uh, any other two more here? Uh, so you spend uh, how, how long have you been in Korea now? Uh, just one months. month. One month. Yeah, we arrived now, on the twenty seventh okay. of February. Now you spend one month in Korea. This is the first time for yeah. you yeah. to be in Korea, yeah. right? In Asia for me. In Asia. So, uh, what do you feel uh, in Korea? Uh, I mean, um, 
in, in culturally or you know all environments uh, what's the difference I would um, say what is a good or what is a bad I mean we cannot judge you good or bad uh, but to your opinion uh, what, what what is the difference major difference uh, yeah in the first place maybe sometimes the communication communication yeah because yes. we're not capable of speaking korean right we didn't have it for a lecture or something yeah so we depend on speaking english <clears throat> and sometimes or a lot of the times if you go to a restaurant or something yeah uh, you meet people who don't speak english or don't yeah. want to speak english sure. i don't know sure yeah so, yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah it's like an adventure sometimes yeah. Uh, yeah. You just order something and sometimes it's so spicy, like yeah. we Europeans don't eat that spicy, so we yeah. like really burn our mouth with, with the food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's surprising because like compared to other like cities of this size, we thought that there are a lot of tourists here, yeah. but we don't see many tourists. So um yeah, and I think that's the reason why there are not that many people speaking English in, in the streets. That's sometimes not that easy, but it's okay, we, we get along. Yeah. Uh, it's, and also, like for me, it's it's a big change because like the the city I come from has like I think three hundred thousand people living there, and then compared to to Seoul, it's like really big. Yeah. So you have to get used to that. I mean, even in Germany, the biggest city in Germany is Berlin with like four million million people, okay. which is still like way smaller than Seoul. Yeah. So yeah. it's like takes some time to get used to. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And yeah. And Asian traffic is also like way different than the German traffic. Yeah. Like all the scooter drivers, we're not used to that at all. Yeah. Yeah, but even in Gangnam? Yeah. 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 How often? Uh, Two times, I think. One time for partying, one time yeah. in daylight. <laughs> well, uh, you should go more often. We should go more often? Okay. Yeah, yeah. there are a lot of dancing places. Um, uh, you know, nice club. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah, been to we one. Yeah. Really there. That's the kind of different culture. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to stay there, but you go and then, uh, meet people and enjoy. Mm -hmm. well, I yeah. had a several uh, students from uh, French and Greece. They always go, go, go there and they enjoy. And uh, I hope they pick me here as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's a lot of students here. That's why there's a lot of partying and everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And also, I noticed, I often go to Germany. But uh, me as a traveler, I had a difficult time. They have to, uh, 9 p.m., there's nowhere to go. Yeah, that's right. All the stores yeah. clo closed. Oh. And uh, sometimes very difficult to find a restaurant. Oh. Yeah. But it's 9 p.m. is quite long. <laughs> yeah, it's so usually. Uh, we eat at 6 in the evening. Yeah, so. yeah but in Korea, yeah. 9 p.m. or midnight or early in the yeah. morning, you can find any many places. Yeah. Well, that's for way different. And yeah. For, you know. yeah, that's actually one thing we really enjoy here. Yeah. Like okay. you can do everything and eat everywhere. And yeah. yeah, all over the day, even in the yeah, night. You can order and you can, it's very convenient in living in Korea. I mean, yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, we're still, we're still getting used to it. Like if you're hungry in the evening, we're like, oh, is there still a place where we can go? And then, okay, it's only 11, like all the places are still open. Yeah. In Germany, it would be really hard. You have yeah. to go to McDonald's or something yeah. to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So I do know many uh, Europeans, uh, they come to Korea. They really love it. I mean, young yeah. people. Yeah. And, and they, I know one um, uh, guy, he, he's about your age, and uh, he uh, planned to stay just one year. Uh, I mean, he's kind of businessman, but uh, he found a, a Korean girlfriend and then uh, decided to get married and then uh, decided to stay in Korea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's how it is sometimes. Okay. 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 Well, thank you so much again. Yeah, thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, as a return, uh, you Korean, uh, I need to present, introduce uh, what you do. Uh, not all, uh, but some volunteers. Uh, I hope some uh, student will, will present what you do. And uh, 
as a research and, and hope to introduce some uh, Korean uh, system. Okay, so uh, through the cacao, uh, if you like to introduce uh, what you do, uh, mostly in research, uh, please send me a cacao talk. I will arrange a time for you, give you a chance to, to talk, uh, like uh, Conrad and, and Daniel, okay? I will give you extra point. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, let's have a, a 10 minutes break, okay? Okay, thank you. Again, uh, thank you so much for uh, introduction. I will spend a little bit, a uh, little time on uh, some uh, <coughs> composite material application in airplane. Uh, 좀, 좀 밝아서, uh, uh, a composite uh, widely used, uh, of course, in uh, transportations. Uh, well, transportation means that automotive and airplane, okay? Uh, why, trans why composite in transportations? Hmm? Why composite transportation? Well, uh, as we introduced very early in the uh, course, uh, it's very light. So, uh, so very light and, and uh, very uh, high performance, stiffness and, and strength. Light means that you can save a lot of energies. Uh, that's a very critical in, in transportations. Uh, composite has been very successfully applied to uh, airplanes. Say uh, this one is a 787 in Boeing. Uh, and as you can see that all the blue uh, shows the uh, composite parts. And uh, this uh, 787 uh, was the uh, uh, first airplane, uh, the commercial airplane, uh, which uh, where the, most of, uh, most of uh, these uh, structures uh, use the uh, composite materials. And not just commercial airplane, but also a military purpose. Uh, composite has a very unique ca characteristics. Uh, so any major structures or sometimes non-structural uh, members are made of the composites. Uh, so in Korea, uh, say Kai and uh, Korean airline, uh, I hope they have uh, some. In, in Korea, we have uh, uh, two major uh, company which use the uh, composite materials in manufacturing of the uh, airplane. Not the whole airplane, but uh, work with the Boeing and work with Air, Air, uh, Airbus. So Kai and, and Korean Airline, they have uh, uh, collaborate with uh, Boeing and uh, Airbus, they make a part. Uh, for example, Korean airline, uh, not sure it shows some here. Uh, Bing. Uh, Wingnet. Okay. You know, the, these days, the airplane has a, a, a old style, conventional style, it, it, wing is just a flat. Uh, flat means just a straight, right? Straight air, uh, wing. But at the tip, we call wing net, it has a, a very special uh, geometry, like up. Have you seen that uh, kind of uh, structures, right? Uh, why uh, airplane uh, goes up at the tip uh, 
Anybody knows that? Why wing has the uh, shape uh, like the up light at the tip like this, rather than just a straight? It's very important. Uh, it is all related to uh, uh, airflow. You know, uh, we can with this uh, we can uh, reduce the all the drag and turbulence, so we can save a lot of energy. Uh, but not much, but one or two percent. But in terms of money, it's a huge, a huge benefit. Uh, so these days, a lot of airplane has a wing net uh, like this, and Korean airline, uh, yeah, it's like you know Korean airline. Uh, uh, they do have uh, a big manufacturing uh, facility in Korea and they provide, they make this wing kit and provide to uh, uh, Airbus and, and, and not sure Boeing, but uh, they are specialized in this manufacturing. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a typical um, wing uh, made of the composites and, and the shape of course is an air foil uh, shapes and has the uh, upper skin and lower skin uh, we call pressure side and suction side, you know, the uh, for us the pressures and, and suction side. And we have a, a, a spa and we have a, the skin uh, has a very uh, stiffeners. You see the all the stiffeners and you can see how big it, it, it is. And uh, they are all made of composites. Uh, Skin is not that thick, uh, but uh, using this uh, stiffener, uh, which will reinforce the uh, structure of uh, properties. Okay. Well, uh, And not only wings, but also uh, fuselage. Uh, is uh, all made of uh, composite materials, and it also have uh, a reinforcement um, stiffeners. Uh, and uh, I'm sure you can find a lot of information from the uh, internet. Uh, most of uh, composite are carbon reinforced plastics, and thermal set mostly thermal set. But nowadays, they, uh, they are look, look for a thermoplastic composite as well. Thermoplastic, uh, compared to a thermoset, uh, uh, they are recyclable, uh, which is a big advantage. Uh, nowadays, not only uh, airplane but also other com uh, structures uh, look for some material which can be recyclable. Uh, it's a big environmental issues uh, all over the world, uh, so uh, it's very critical in, in uh, uh, for structures. Well, back to uh, automotive, where well, composite uh, is kind of a, a big boom uh, for automotive. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Volkswagen, uh, Golf, uh, multiple composite material. Uh, <coughs> a lot of uh, uh, components are made of the composite materials. Uh, uh, very typical one is the uh, BMW, uh, say i3, uh, which was rela released about uh, 
five or six years ago. The uh, electric car, but uh, the structural wise is so full uh, composite, more than 90%. Uh, very light, uh, uh, well, it's not a big car, but it is uh, very light. Uh, you can see that. Uh, so, so the uh, we can save a lot of uh, battery power. Uh, so they were technological, uh, technology uh, wise, they uh, improved a lot. Uh, and, but we still uh, need to 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 find a way to reduce the cost. Uh, there's a uh, we need to develop some technologies. Uh, keep high performance of a composite, uh, also uh, lower uh, the cost. And this is the um, uh, I8 uh, and the sports car of the BMW. This is the, we call uh, life module, and this is the um, uh, driving module. Uh, just a two big separate, and we made this um, uh, life module full, almost one body, uh, cocker, uh, and and very strong. Uh, and the bottom is all electric uh, as well, um, aluminum chassis, uh, but the most of them is the uh, battery. Uh, so this is the uh, another um, typical application of a composite material in. Uh, automotive, especially in BMW. Well, e e even in Europe, uh, again, the BMW is a leading, um, well, Mercedes-Benz, of course, uh, is kind of a leading uh, the automotive industry uh, in terms of a composite application. They had a joint ventures with uh, um, um, I forgot the name of the company, but uh, they uh, established a new company uh, which provide all the uh, composite parts. Okay, uh, so you can see that. Uh, I'd like to show you. Uh, 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 yes, just a second series. More on seven series. I hope they have here. Mm. Okay, I like to watch this. Uh, this video uh, released by the BMW introducing uh, what they, what the components are made. Oops, not this one. But anyhow, this is the a uh, a, a uh, manufacturing process of the composite materials. This is the um, uh, one part and, and using uh, is a wet compression molding just a, a composite and they put the uh, epoxy and they just uh, press and then done. Uh, oh, this is a side seal. Uh, and they pick up and, and using the uh, robot. So it's uh, uh, kind of fully automized, even in composite material. The most difficult uh, uh, technology associated with the composite is the uh, how to automize the process. Uh, it's not easy uh, compared to a metal parts. But as you can see that uh, BMW uh, was very successful uh, in, in automizing uh, all the manufacturing process. And after make, uh, making part, they uh, need to uh, some uh, machining and make a hole. And they, it, it is also uh, uh, automized. And, and uh, they cut with very special tools. Uh, 
just this is what This is not much the error composite, but uh, I was trying to find another one. Uh, but anyhow, it, it, you, you can find many, uh, uh, many movies, uh, YouTube, uh, relate to a uh, Composite manufacturings. Okay, uh, we will certainly get back to to uh, more applications, uh, automotive and then aerospace structures and pressure vessel and so on. Um, and I hope that at the final you choose a, your own part uh, to design uh, using all the stuff we are we are covering right now okay using your excel basically okay i like to remind you what we covered uh, last uh, class it is the um, like to emphasize again the deformation condition we are uh, we are trying to uh, drive a relations between load and deformation okay load and deformation we apply the load a certain structures and we like to find how much deformation we have uh, for that purpose first we need to assume what kind of deformation uh, laminate would have. So there are two types of deformations. One is the in-plane strain, uh, meaning all the ply deform all together in plane directions, uh, three modes, and one direction and two direction and a shear. Um, so all ply will deform all together like this. And the second one is the curvatures. Curvature is the, uh, have the curved in, in one direction and two direction and, and twisting curvature. So basically six different deformation uh, mode uh, of any laminate. So regardless of the number of layers, regardless of the materials, there are always a six types of a deformation. Three in plane and three curvatures. Okay, that is the uh, assumption, but this assumption is uh, quite accurate, uh, quite accurate, okay? So uh, uh, please remember that uh, there are six deformations. Now, uh, how much load we apply and, and what types of uh, load we are applying? Uh, again, there are a tension in one direction, what well, tension and compression it doesn't matter. Uh, load in one direction and load in two direction and shear directions. So there will be three in plane. In plane again means that deform in, in plane directions, not like this. And and bending uh, moment in, in in one direction and two direction and then twisting. So. For the load, also we have a, a three different in-plane load and three different bending. 
uh, bending, including uh, including twisting. Okay, uh, so a uh, free uh, implant, free bending. Now, the, using the definitions of the implant, uh, implant load is uh, simply the summation of all stresses through the thickness, and moment is the all uh, again all the um, uh, summation of a stress times a distance z because it's a moment. Okay, this is the uh, definitions. So now uh, the point here is the how to relate between in-plane um, deformations, six components, and a six component load. That's the, that is the, what we like to drive. And using the uh, step and step and step, and we got the ABD matrix, okay, ABD matrix. Okay, ABD matrix, uh, I don't wanna go through again. Uh, so we, we got the ABD matrix. So input to uh, this ABD matrix is certainly uh, layup sequence. Q is the uh, each ply stiffness and, and through the uh, integration of a Z means that we have to know the uh, layup sequence and angles and, and, and so on. And B matrix and D matrix uh, uh, same. Uh, as you can see here, we have a multiplication of a Z, multiplication of a G square. Okay, so this is the stiffness matrix in laminate. This is a core result of the classical laminate theory, CLT, we call CLT. You can say uh, CLT uh, composites, very famous uh, uh, theory, classical laminar theory. Okay, CLT for the composite is a pretty much well-known theory and procedures. Everybody, uh, I mean, uh, uh, those who work on the composite laminate, uh, they use this uh, theory, classical laminate theory. Okay, even. TU Delft uh, in, in Netherlands, they have a very strong program uh, in, in composite. Uh, they have OCW, means that a class. Uh, so you can see, I just want to emphasize the, how this theory, uh, how important this theory is. Okay, let's go laminate theory. And I'm sure um, while it he, he shows a lot of wood, uh, but uh, that, that is the uh, classical laminate theory. Okay. So uh, we program um, ABD matrix. So now we are able to get how much strain and curvature uh, when we are given in plane and bending moment. Okay, so uh, uh, that is the uh, procedures. And this is the all the uh, detail algorithm uh, based on the theory. Uh, A, uh, from the derivation, we got the, uh, this uh, summation of all Q bar, uh, DZ, uh, meaning we have to multiply what is ZK plus one minus ZK. Well, that is a thickness of each ply, right? Thickness and, and Q bar and B, uh, we need to multiply z, so integration, we have a z square, so z square minus z square. So, and d is a, a g, uh, z um, square, and so uh, power of a three, uh, we, we have this one, and we program that, right? So, uh, I'm sure you already have it. Uh, but here again, uh, we do have a uh, ABD matrix. You got the ABD matrix, and and to calculate uh, this strain, uh, we need to inverse 
this matrix and multiply the load and inverse of this, multiply this, and then we got the in plane strain and curvatures. Okay, that, so that is a given and that, that is the output. Okay, now, what is the next step? Uh, next step is that uh, we like to calculate how much strain in each ply, okay? That is the uh, next step, each ply. Uh, I'm sorry, before, go that, before going that, uh, we, uh, have to define this equivalent engineering constant of the laminate, okay? Uh, equivalent engineering constant means that from this six by six, uh, let's just focus on this behavior because in isotropic material, isotropic, uh, we don't have this, we don't have this. There's a no coupling term. And, uh, and isotropic material, we only have this. And this, uh, okay, isotropic material, we do have uh, some, uh, a material property definition, epsilon, one, epsilon two, and epsilon uh, six will be defined as the one of E uh, one and minus one of E, uh, this is a Poisson's ratio and, and minus Poisson's ratio and one over E and zero and zero, zero. 1 over G, uh, but isotropic, we don't need a, a 1. And then uh, we have a, a N1 and N2 and N6, but this is the uh, stress. And stress, by the way, you have to divide by the thickness. Okay, so uh, this is the in-plane load, which is the um, a total load through the thickness. So define the stress, we need to divide by H. So we, we need to divide by H and H and H. Uh, I just want to remind you uh, of the uh, definition of this engineering constant. What is a Young's modulus? And why is a Poisson's ratio? What is a shear modulus? So this is the uh, uh, definitions of engineering constant for isotropic material. Now on isotropic material, now we do have a, a this is a one and this is a two and this is the um, different material, right? So that is the, uh, so you can say this is the uh, one and of course we can sometimes use a one and uh, instead of one, two, we use X and Y. So this is the engineering constant definitions for the anisotropic material. Now, how about the, um, so isotropic and anisotropic and laminate. Even for the laminate here, uh, we can have a, a similar uh, definitions uh, like that. So that is the what we like to uh, drive. And here, uh, so this is the ABD matrix, uh, A matrix we have. Uh, and we, we have A equal A inverse. And we got this uh, small uh, A, uh, so which would relate uh, in plane load and in plane strain. So uh, 
And now this one, uh, N is in plane load. And in plane load, uh, this is a stress. And stress is the N over H. H again is the uh, uh, thickness. So uh, again, uh, I'll re, uh, write this one. N is the stress and integrations. So if we divide by H, you know, this is the average uh, stress. Uh, and from the definitions of engineering constant, we relating uh, this is the strain and this is a stress. This is the uh, definition of E1 and E2 and in even E6 and this is the uh, Poisson's ratio. Okay, that is the uh, equivalent engineering constant of the laminate. Uh, so th this is a very important uh, material uh, property of the laminate composite. Say we have uh, a laminate and, and we are blind, for example. Let's say we are blind and we like to extend. How much stiffness you feel? Well, you feel the stiffness of E1, like an isotropic material. Okay, and in E2, what, how much stiffness you feel as an engineering constant? Well, this is the E2 you, you feel. So uh, for the laminate composite, what is the engineering constant? If you have that kind of question, this is a step you need to follow. Okay, so let's program that. <clears throat> so this is the uh, A matrix, this is the A matrix, so le let's define the, this equal uh, M inverse of A matrix. Uh, we didn't define the A matrix, we just uh, choose this one. And uh, so uh, that is the, uh, we call uh, A matrix inverse, okay? So this is the A matrix inverse. And now E, one Young's modulus equivalent to Young's modulus. What is the E one? Uh, see this one. This is the uh, this one, and E one is as you can see here uh, equal one equal one divided by uh, this term. Right, this term. As you can see here, uh, this one is that. So E one will be just inverse of that. And also, uh, let's say E two inverse of this. And now, how how to get to uh, uh, get a, a Poisson's ratio of this? Uh, you can call it. Uh, I like to use one two, okay? Mm. One two. How do we get a one two? Uh, These terms. Well, simply you um, divide by these terms uh, from this uh, minus this term divide by uh, one one term. That would give us the Poisson's ratio. And how about the uh, shear modulus? Shear modulus will, will be uh, simply one over this. Now there are uh, a Poisson's ratio which uh, relates uh, in, in plane um, normal and shear term, which is this term, which, 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 uh, which disappear in isotropic material, but 
in composite in general would have us this uh, coupling term. Okay, so uh, the, let's define this uh, Poisson's ratio one six and uh, Poisson's ratio two six. And one six, how you get the one six? Well, this divide by uh, this and and minus uh, that will be a, a, a new one six and uh, well it is happened to be zero okay uh, this is minus uh, two six two six divide by uh, divide by uh, distance okay so uh, this is the uh, equivalent engineering constant uh, let's uh, define these terms from the left color Uh, there, there is a little bit of difference. You may use these symbols, okay? You may use this one to define uh, these terms, but uh, sometimes we don't, we do have a non-zero B matrix, then this one, uh, this is a, by the way, uh, I'm sorry, from this, Okay, you can, you may choose this uh, from this or that. Uh, right now they are same, why? Because there are no B metrics. As you can see here, B metrics are zero, right? So this term and just inverse of A will be the same, but if you have a, a, a unsymmetry layout sequence, such as, you know, any, Unsymmetry. Uh, this is the unsymmetry, and as you can see here, uh, this one and this one, uh, they are a little bit uh, different. Okay, they, they are not quite the same because this B matrix is a non-zero. So anyhow, uh, this is the uh, engineering constant. Okay, this is the engineering constant. And, um, okay, I like to, uh, download a program. Okay, I, I like to, program a little bit uh, to automate the older process. Uh, I, I need to download some modules. Uh, let's say, not sure. We used to have a link to download it. Okay. Uh, then what?
but I'm using a lot of Google Drive. Uh, let's say. Okay, uh, Allah, I don't know why I cannot find that. I was changing. I don't understand why we can. What I'm trying to do is to, to how to program the uh, a macro in Excel. Uh, oh, it's a different model. Huh? Okay. I like to show you uh, how to download on them.
안되지 다운로드 안되지 save download 오케이 okay. now we got 오케이 okay. 오케이 okay. Okay, the reason I just show all the process is that uh, I like to share with you uh, from the very uh, beginning. Say you have an Excel, okay, from somewhere, uh, like to open. And the Excel file which I, I'm gonna open is the, say has the, um, some uh, macro, okay. The mac it has some macro, uh, which I like to, export i like to import macro from a excel to our excel okay um, so this is the uh, a button to start some uh, macro uh, oh man. i'm sorry this is not on my computer i cannot Oh la la. Okay, this is the uh, analysis tools we have to activate uh, to be able to see uh, your oh, we, and then uh, we also need to do uh, okay. We also need to do, okay, this is a, a development tool, okay? And then you, you need to click to show them in menu system. This is the, in English, you have a development tool. Now you are able to uh, run or start the program some Excel uh, macro, okay? So uh, Visual Basic, now if you click that, Okay, this is the important step. It's not like the, the stuff we, we've been through. This is the uh, real programming stuff. Uh, again, in your Excel, usually don't have a, this, um, a, um, uh, you don't have a, this tool. It's called development tool. This menu needs to be activated from uh, options. Okay, unfortunately they are all Korean, uh, but you, you, two steps, you need to have a, 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 a extra uh, functions and you need to select a, this button and also uh, you need to click a, um, this check so, so that this uh, menu will, will appear here, okay? And then if you click, you would have uh, this, a, uh, we show you what kind of a, a program you can access. And now we have a, uh, oh man. Okay, now you have a, a, you can protect the macro, okay? Uh, I got a, a password and you have a module, you have a, some macro in there which you like to import from other Excel, okay? Once I import, I will show you uh, what kind of a, a program is it. Now, the one you, we are working on is the, this guy, this composite material. As you can see that, 
uh, we have uh, a two, two Excel. One is the one we are working on right now, this guy. And this is the one which have several, uh, I mean, a, 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 some macros, okay? So you, what we like to do is the a, a transfer a macro from here to there, okay? That's the, what I like to show you. And here we already have uh, some macro and some functions and there are some uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, programming uh, modules in visual basic environment you know microsoft windows system they provide you uh, the way of your program is called visual studio visual studio where you can program c now it's called c sharp not the c plus plus c sharp and uh, uh, visual basic uh, pretty much advanced stuff but uh, you don't need to worry too much about the language itself. You, but may, one of the uh, easiest one will be the visual basic. Okay, that is the one like to uh, 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 the one uh, which Excel using visual basic. Okay, um, so uh, to. So go to a development tool and there is a, a module uh, menu called Visual Basic. Now you can see, you can see uh, there are several, uh, there are four, but this guy is the, uh, uh, we don't need it. And this one is a uh, Excel built-in function, uh, which also we don't need it. But this one is the one I just opened, and this is the one we are working on. So if you click, you can see there are many objects in Excel uh, worksheet, which we don't need it. But this is the one we are uh, like to, this is the one user interface, okay? This is the form. That's why it's called Visual Basic, Visual. Uh, in old days, to make this kind of a, graphic user interface, GUI, you have to program very complicated coding. You make a, a position, you make a, 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 what kind of font, and, and a lot of coding to make just one simple uh, geometry like that. But Visual Studio, Visual Basic, you, all you need to do just is a click and then delete, and, and you can, uh, it help you program very easily. Uh, so anyhow, we like to uh, import this guy uh, to to uh, to our uh, our uh, module. All you need to do is just uh, drag and, and put it here. Now you have a uh, um, import here. And also, uh, this is the a graphic form, and another one is the like to import. Visual Basic Code program. Uh, don't worry too much about the, all the grammars and the lines, but this is the a graph, uh, Visual Basic module, which we also like to import from this to, to here. So now uh, we do have, uh, uh, this is our Excel, right? This is our Excel. We do have a, a worksheet as you can see, worksheet one, two, three, four, which is the what? Which is uh, which is the one, two, three, four? Okay, this is the a, uh, a worksheet. Okay, and there are another one, as I mentioned, which were imported from uh, other uh, Excel. One is the input, uh, which I did. And then uh, th there is the another one, is called uh, a, uh, a macro, okay? Now, uh, we don't need this one. Uh, let's just get rid of it. Uh, let's close it. We, we are in our Excel, uh, I'm a worksheet. And, and, but as you can see here, we do have uh, this 
uh, in addition to uh, this worksheet, we do have uh, a um, form, graphic user interface, and you, you have uh, a visual basic. Of course, you can start from blank. You can always have uh, a uh, uh, new one. Uh, you, you can always do that, uh, but this is a much easier way to do that. And you can also um, change it, uh, but I don't want to spend too much time on the how to program, but let's just uh, starting from here. Okay, now this is a subroutine. From subroutine, and this is the name of the subroutine, and it runs from here, 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 here to to end the subroutine. This is the one module. Okay, there is another module starting from the subroutine. There is another end, and and so on, and so on. And now, what it does? Well, we don't know yet, but we like to call this subroutine to execute to execute uh, this one. Uh, to do so, uh, we go to uh, here, okay, uh, here, and then uh, to execute that macro, uh, what you need to do is that we have to, um, Mm. Let's see. Uh, okay, right here. Okay, I can I can add and here. Uh, a, this is a development tool, and there is a Visual Basic, and there are a several um, menus which will help you how to program. One of them is the uh, inclusions and some uh, tools. You just a, a drag. And, and make it. And now this button will pop up and then uh, ask me which macro will be uh, called. So like uh, as I showed, there were four modules and I just chose this one. And, and uh, I will call a uh, quick plot. So whenever I click this one, this clicking will execute that macro. Okay, so uh, say here, and then it's a link to the, this guy, and then if you uh, edit, we get back to, to this module. Okay, you, you got the overall idea. And now what it does, once you execute, one thing I, I like to emphasize is that input quick dot show. Okay, this is the object and this is a method. This is object oriented. The input kick, what is the input kick? Input kick is this guy. So what it does is input kick dot show means that we show this guy. So let's try to click this one. As you can see, this will pop up. And whatever we enter this value, uh, value, this will, value will given into uh, our macro. Okay. Uh, so, here, input, show, and then minimum value will be input kick initial value. Initial value, whatever and the value, will be stored as this variable. And, and the final, this value, there were three uh, text uh, value. Whatever value we enter here, that will be saved as this three variable now this variable will be used in in certain programming uh, as, as a variable uh, for example uh, minimum um, uh, value uh, is the one uh, i mean is used somewhere okay uh, and then 
Okay, I, I don't want to go through. Uh, I will certainly go back uh, and explain later. But uh, here uh, we need to have uh, a quick chart ranges. Now, trying to show you how to interact between this program and this Excel file. We how to get the value from A to uh, here to there or uh, vice versa. And that is the Uh, this one is not so uh, important. Uh, you will see why I type this one. Now, what what it what it do is that uh, once you click and we got the three variable, this variable values will go into macro, and macro will run using this value. Well, nothing happened. Why? Because uh, there's a old old blank not relate yet. But now I'm going to show you what we like to do is that we like to change this 45 degree, like to change it from 0, 10, 20, 30. We like to changing, and then we like to get the, this value output. We save here 0 degree, we got this value, 10 degree, we got this value, and so on. So we like to repeat as many as we like. You know, it's just repeating. So this programming will help us uh, reduce our labor, okay? So uh, that's what I like to show you. So 45 instead of 45 equal this guy, which means that whenever it changes, uh, say zero, you can see this value is changing. So this guy uh, is from from here. Okay, this value goes to there. You can see that. Now, as output means that okay, whatever we value here, we like to uh, have this e1 as output, and e2 as output, and e3. Uh, here and and here so uh, on the left hand side is just a name so you can this is the output we like to have so again wh what it does is that what it does is that we change this one as you can see close uh, uh, pay attention please uh, here is a zero and you get this value well you get this value because this guy is basically uh, where does it from uh, here is from here right and this guy uh, I like to select here like this Oops. sorry so anyhow uh, This guy is from here. Okay, I will uh, do it again. Uh, we'll go. This one is go. Uh, go. Uh, no. This is the uh, go go that that way. And this one is uh, comes from uh, comes from there. Okay, from there. So. Uh, Pay attention, please. We have a 10, and you can see all the values are automatically changing. Do you see that? Right? So now what this program will do, uh, once you click, and we got the all the 
we like to change this input from 0 to 90 degree by every one value. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and up to 90. And then click, and it just automatically, and program is done. So what it, what it did was it just it changed the input from a 90 degree. And then we get this old value. You want to, uh, this four value from here. And then it just create a new worksheet called title. And you get this plot as a function of angle from the zero to 90. Where does this title name come from? Well, this is the one you entered. Uh, say if you plot the result, uh, I don't think we need this. And then you see a plot result, uh, you will get uh, this one, another one called worksheet called plot result and you get the older result. Is it, uh, so you don't need to go all uh, detail about the program. I mean, if you want to, uh, you, you're welcome to do so. Uh, so it, it, what it does is that um, get a value and then a uh, quick start, that one comma one, you got the current worksheet, which means that uh, you got this one, one comma one, and you got the plot result, and you create a new worksheet, and you, you get this older result, and that is the, what it does. And here, uh, and, and you get the save as the, um, uh, this data sheet, you save all the result, and then you 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 uh, a, a plot uh, result. Okay, uh, that is the, what it does. If you're interested, you you can go through. Uh, this is a very simple macro, and th th you can and do that. Uh, another one uh, easier uh, is that. Like uh, I like to develop or program a tools. Uh, yourself uh, is not easy to start from blank so what you what you can do is that go to uh, go to uh, development tool and there is the call macro recording you can any action will be recorded in macro this is very unique very uh, very convenient say okay now whatever you do any actions uh, any actions entering or anything will be saved as the um, uh, in the macro so if you see that uh, my action which I just did it was the, the saved here see C10 I enter one and C11, I enter two and zero. So not only just entering, but you say you want to plot, say you want to plot, you want to say again, I want to record my action and save in macro language. So you start it, and then now all the action you do will be saved as the macro select and then you like to plot and things and, and you want to stop uh, then you, you can see that there is a module to uh, the action i did was a select and then a, a, a xy scatter plot and, and and plot the graph all the actions are record in in macro so uh, you can easily learn from this record and then you can just uh, select. Uh, you can select some value. Uh, you can add do loop. You can add a logic, uh, you know, if statement or something. Uh, say you can say if uh, uh, A equal one, then, uh, then it's automatically uh, you can just edit this kind of uh, modules. Then is uh, you can add uh, if statement. Okay, so my uh, 
So this kind of a recording, macro is become very popular. Uh, I'm sure some of you already know. Say you are running um, ANSYS or Abacus, they are always the uh, macro language. Uh, for example, Abacus, you have a Python. Python do all kinds of job. And, and, and you don't need to start from blank. Whatever your actions, you even in you know, a CAD, uh, CAD program, I mean CAD uh, procedure, all recorded in X, uh, macro, and then you, you uh, modify that. Okay, so I, I like to give you an idea about the, um, how to record macro and how to use this macro uh, in your uh, tools. See, the Excel is easy to, to follow, easy to show you, that's the reason I'm using Excel, but doesn't need to be uh, Excel. You can use other tools, uh, Python or even uh, uh, Java uh, as you prefer, but you need to have your own language. Doesn't matter how uh, complex or simple, but you have to have your own language to be able to talk to computers. Very important. So anyhow, um, now let's try to, I can show you how uh, uh, important uh, it is uh, in your homework. Uh, I hope you remember your homework. Say, I like to, this is the uh, O4. I, let's give them a name, this cell uh, as input. Okay, let's give a name, uh, input, and um, Okay, so this one has, it has a name input. Now this guy, say equal input and equal minus input. And then I forgot the, uh, uh, I, I like to check the, your homework. Uh, one of the homework was the, um, say, number two, plot the implant strain of E1 of zero plus minus theta 90 under N1, okay? In that problem, is a number two of your homework. You enter, this is the uh, 1,000, one kilonewtons, and then uh, zero, okay, zero, and this is the now input. This is a theta, which will be will uh, be automatically changed. And this is a minor theta, and this is a ninety, and this is a symmetric. So you you just enter. This one will be same as this guy, and this one will be the same as the that one. Okay, so. Uh, to confirm, you like to 45, and you can see this guy is automatically changed to uh, plus minus minus plus <coughs> angle. Okay, and then uh, say plot in plane strain, plot in plane strain. Ah, I like to plot or well, get the output E1 from this guy. That's all you need to do. Uh, say not only E1, like to uh, say uh, E1 and K1, uh, E2 and, and uh, E6, okay? Let's say we like to have them blank. And this one, uh, say E2, and this one is E6. So uh, as I, Then uh, you enter 10 and you can see automatically these values are changing. So uh, here is the plot, uh, homework 2 point, uh, this is what, two, uh, 3.2. Homework uh, 3 dash 2 dash uh, 2, okay. Uh, so uh, if you click this one and now like to change it angle from zero to 90, and then you can see that this is the uh, value, uh, how strains are changing from uh, 
angle zero to uh, 90 degree. Okay, uh, again, uh, this one. Oops. Uh, I don't know why it does not show you, show here. Hmm. See here, uh, the problem statement was that zero plus theta minus theta and 90 and symmetric. And we like to plot a epsilon one and two and and six uh, versus uh, this theta. How does it change? Uh, the load was the n one equal one kilo newton, and others uh, were all zero. Okay, this was the problem statement. And and uh, let's take a look at e one. Okay, e one uh, is the uh, like this plus minus, of course, the zero and 90. Under, we only have a one directional load. And plot this. Well, here, here is what? Here is the, uh, since this one is a theta equals zero, this is a zero, 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 90 symmetric. So this blue is the E1. And it, 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 this is a starting point. And E2, uh, E2, as you can see here, this is E2, which is, is kind of a small value. And E6 is almost a zero value. And now you're changing, uh, increasing this angle, theta, and, and uh, up to here, up to here means that this is the a zero. 90, well, minus 90 is the same as 90, and 90 and, and symmetric. And here, extreme case is zero, zero, and zero, 90 and symmetric. So here we have a much softer material, which means that we have a larger E1. E1 has the uh, a soft. So we have a more uh, strain and, and, and others is not easy to see, but here uh, I'm sure this will be 45 degree. And this is the uh, a, uh, E2, we have a, uh, and 45 degree under this one, we have a shrinkages, which is the uh, Poisson's ratio here. Uh, so we once we have all the results uh, expressed in a graph, uh, you can um, see uh, a lot of uh, results. Okay, uh, please uh, use this macro in your Excel. Uh, I will send you two modules. One is the uh, a uh, this input, and the other one is this quick chart, and now uh, you can do a uh, rest of them. Okay, we we uh, okay. That is the uh, another homework assigned this week. Now, uh, theory goes, next step is the uh, how to calculate, how to calculate. Okay, by the way, this is the all, the result we got using this macro. We call quick chart, quick chart macro. And as you can see that, uh, by x here laminate means a plus minus, only plus minus uh, symmetric. 
and E1 and E2 and G6 is, is you got this result. Well, it's, it's so um, easy uh, in our using our program. Say uh, just uh, stay with um, stay two. Well, you can change the angle, but let's say zero thickness and and uh, zero thickness. And zero thickness means that we only have a plus minus and minus plus and zero thickness. So this is the A by, uh, by X here. Okay. And, and then uh, uh, the one, the result we got is the E1, E2, and G6. How do we get? Uh, we can get uh, E1, uh, this, this value. Well, uh, we, we have uh, a only G6, not the uh, Poisson's ratio, but we, we can have them all. We can have them all. Certainly we can have them all. So we, we got this all full value. And then uh, we like to have this one is from here. This one is from here, and this one is from here, and this one is from here. Okay. And this one is the, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just call a uh, plot of BX. And then you click, uh, now this is the exactly same result as you get. Of course, you need to choose a, what kind of material uh, you, you, you choose. Here we just uh, choose a number one, a number one uh, material is from a t uh, 300, but you can uh, freely choose whatever material you like to choose. Uh, point here is that, um, see, a very important result, by the way. This is the uh, biaxial, okay, it's called biaxial, okay, or angle ply laminate, biaxial. Uh, By X here means that plus theta minus theta and symmetry. So, um, for example, if you see this one, it's called here plus and minus and symmetry. And this is very typical uh, winding for the uh, winding procedures. And this is the mandrel is a rotating, and we have a wires and and go, uh, you just go, goes like that, and he, he, he wind like that, and wind like that, go back and forth, back and forth. We make a, we can make a simply, uh, uh, this kind of a tube uh, uh, very easily. So this is the layout sequence. And these structures, uh, this one, uh, E1, and this is the, uh, I mean, all, 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 all stiffness. And E1, Well, everything is gone, uh, but no problem because you're going to program that. Uh, so, I hate that. Uh, let's try to. to uh, this is the. This one. How to get back. It's all the Excel. Mm. Okay. Uh, save is a three twenty three. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, not much, but it is okay. So we entered the zero and uh, zero and zero and, and zero to make only these four plies active with the non zero thickness. And uh, so th this one uh, as the input and output will be this, right? And then uh, let's plot a, a BX. Uh, before that, I'd like to save. Okay, let's just save it. Uh, okay. Just save it. And then uh, a plot uh, from starting from a uh, zero and 90 and then Something is not right. Oh. Okay, so this has to be named as the uh, input. And this one has to be uh, input. And this one will be minus input. And this one is minus input. And this one will be input. Okay, and then uh, let's plot. Now, I got it. Um, so this is the one uh, we, we uh, results. Uh, you can see that how, how this, uh, what is that? So this one, uh, very, uh, as I said, very important uh, layout sequence. Uh, now we got this. And, and plus theta and minus theta and, and symmetric. And this is the uh, theta uh, from here. And E1 is the stiffness from here. And then of course, in, in zero degree is the highest uh, stiffness. Um, this one, E1 at zero, what is, uh, what's the value? Uh, value, uh, as you can see here, um, 50. Okay, uh, go back. <coughs> Here, I made one mistake. Uh, is that um, when we define the E1 and E2 from this matrix, we have to have a, a right-hand side it has to be stresses, which means that the inverse uh, right now we we only have uh, n n1 and n2 so we have to divide by thickness we have to divide by thickness on the right hand side and here we have to multiply h okay so we have to multiply h and so uh, we need to divide by thickness thickness so th thickness we already have here now, as you can see that, say confirm, zero degree means that BX zero means all zero. So 141 gigapascal 
will be the same as this. Uh, it's not right. Oops. Input. Okay. See, 181 gigapascal is the same as this 181 gigapascal. Why? Because this is a zero, means that all zero ply, and the stiffness of this laminate will be same as the stiffness of this one material. That is, should be output, right? And, and uh, so that uh, we have to add divide by H. I divide by H, not the, uh, this one, but this guy is, we have to divide by H. Okay, so uh, let's do it again, uh, plot. And then now we got this uh, correct one. And as you can see that, E start zero, this means that zero degree EX 181, uh, which is the same as this one. And now 90 degree, what do we have? Well, it's very small and cannot see. Let's read from the value here, is the 10.3 gigapascal, which is a 10.3 gigapascal. Because in that case, is all, 90 degree will be EY, right, EY. And a shear modulus, uh, very important, shear modulus, starting from 7.17, 7 Okay, I will, it's the same, the same worksheet, but with the two different window, okay? Uh, so here, uh, this one starting from the 72, uh, 7.2, which is, uh, this is uh, 7.17. That is the basically, as you can see that uh, seven, 0.17, right? That is the starting one. Now he changed it to 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 the maximum. Uh, it reaches the maximum at 45 degree. Uh, I already explained uh, for, for, for 46 gigapascal. Uh, I mean, uh, so he changed the uh, a lot. Uh, and then he, he reduced to again 70. One, because uh, 90, uh, zero degree shear modulus, same as a 90 degree shear modulus. Because the shear modulus is always defined is like that. So shear modulus of this and shear modulus that will be the same. So the zero degree and 90 degree uh, reach the same material property, but as you can see that, uh, is uh, it reaches the maximum, uh, which is about 40 or 50 gigapascal compared to a seven at uh, zero degree. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm glad we spent time helping you how to use this macro. Uh, and program. Uh, actually, I was gonna uh, do uh, and explain how to calculate the strain in each ply. Well, that is uh, relatively very easy, very easy. Uh, the, uh, since we already have, already have a uh, theory, uh, this one,
Okay, I'm going to just uh, like to add one equation. Okay, just one equation. Um, I hope you, you, you still have, you, this is the starting point, right? It, that was a starting point. Um, see here, what we have was this three is the epsilon one to epsilon one, and this one is the uh, this guy. So each ply as a function of z, um, you all you need to do is that this e one plus z k and, and so on. Uh, so this one e e one. I hope that they have a, a theory here. Uh, well, I don't want to rush, okay? Uh, but I like to spend more time in these chapters. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. The next one, I, we, we have a theory how to calculate the ply strain, but I will postpone to a next, um, next class but one thing i like to emphasize is that this kind of a, a honeycomb structures see we have a, a, a layup sequence from 